Well, good morning. It is uh, Sunday, December 22nd, about five minutes before 9 a.m. in the morning. Um, I have not been up flying for like a month and a half. Uh, airplane ownership, tale of woe and misery, and I'll, I'll fill you in when we're in flight. We're just going on a breakfast flight. I'm going to try to knock some rust off here. Um, and... Uh, uh, I got to get my IFR redone and all kinds of stuff, and I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in. I'll fill you in. So anyway, we're about to get the ATIS, and we'll go ahead and get going here. Right. Yeah, so so. Quad City Airport Information Hotel, 1452 Zulu, wind 230 at 5, visibility 10, sky clear, temperature 3, dew point minus 1, altimeter 3022. Uh, visual approach in use, landing and departing runway 27. Right on initial contact, you have hotel. Okay, we have hotel 3022. 3022. All right, we don't we don't have a IFR clearance. You need to call clearance delivery. Twenty-five oh five. Gotta get that contact squared away. Now it's one twenty-four oh five. Or wait a minute, twenty-four oh five. Good morning, Quad City Clearance Delivery, Comanche 6928 Papa at the South Tees with Hotel. Comanche 6928 Papa, Quad City Clearance. Yeah, good morning, sir. VFR to Quincy, um, 4,500. Comanche 28 Papa, clearance on request, standby. Clearance on request, I'm not... IFR. Said VFR, I think. G6928 Papa, maintain VFR at or below 4000, departure frequency 133.27, squawk 3511. 6928 Papa, at or below 4, 133.27, is my squawk, 28 Papa. Command G28 Papa, read back correct. All right, so 133.27. That's tower, we're gonna go to ground here. Go, okay. Program the GPS. Goes to here, got a message, new flight plan, and we are gonna activate that. A-M-L-I-K-U-I-N, that is correct. Transponder is set. Lights are good. Directional gyro is set. Working well, okay. Nav radios, we don't have to worry about. Airspeed is zero. Altimeters are set. 3022, 022. BSI is set. Flaps are up. Trim is set. Landing gear indicator is green. Axing instructions, we're going to check the turn coordinator, slip skid. And let's check the brakes. Brakes are set. Call ground. Get ready to record the taxi. 21-9 on two. Good morning, Quad City Ground. Comanche 6928 Papa at the South Tees. Looking to taxi the active. 
Command G, 6928, Papa, Quad City Ground, runway 27 at November. Taxi via Kilo Golf, November, cross runway 31 at Golf. Kilo Golf, November, cleared across 31 at Golf. 6928, Papa. Okay, folks. I'm not even sure if I remember how to steer this thing on the ground. Good God. The weather has not been very pleasant, although this week is supposed to be nice. Uh, today and, and actually through like Monday or Tuesday, we're actually in the 50s. It has been kind of chilly. Nothing major right now. It's 30. Uh, when I got out of the car, I think I said it was 31. But with this new heated hangar, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, we got a plane up here. He looks like he's turning. Not sure what he's doing, but we're going to watch him. But I, I, I'll i explain once we get up in the air and I get us into cruise. I just have had a one, just a tale of airplane ownership that is, uh, well, it hasn't been pleasant. Let me put it that way. Always something, right? Command G to a Papa, verify you have information, hotel. Uh, Roger, 6928 Papa has hotel. Roger, thank you. Okay, here's Kilo. We're going right on Kilo. Skyhawk 4352 Romeo, Quad City Clearance. That's the Skyhawk we just passed. I hope everybody's winter has been going good so far. I think the last time that I put a video up was when I went down to Romeo, maintain BFR at or below 4000 to frequency 125.9 Squawk. The Army Three. reunion I had in West Branson, Missouri in September. So I've been up a couple of times after that. I I took uh, the misses up. Uh, we went somewhere and I took... Uh, Skyhawk 52 Romeo, read back correct. I went and had breakfast with a cousin of mine. Who's also a pilot. Uh, owns a Cherokee 6 he keeps here. He, he just got his license and everything. I don't know, maybe six months ago. Uh, he's going to start working on his instrument rating. But he's got a, a six passenger fixed gear. Cherokee 6 260. Real nice. I mean, at November. real nice. The uh, Kilo Golf Paint November. The interior is really nice. Um, engine's good. Runway 27 at November. Taxi via Kilo. Anyway, so we went up to uh, Madison for breakfast. And then I landed, put the plane away which is where my tale of woe and misery started. But for right now, we're going to taxi. Temperatures are looking good. Oil is almost out of the yellow. 3492 square 27. Envoy 3492 Quad City Ground. Taxi via Juliet Mike, cross runway 13 at Juliet. Yeah, oil right, temps Juliet, at Mike, 122. Uh, Juliet, Envoy 3492. Fahrenheit. Here's our left-hand turn. Water ski, 4795, Quad City Clearance, clearance on request, stand by. Okay, we are cleared across 3-1. Anybody on the down, or on the face or uh, final here, so we're gonna Water ski, 4795, cleared to Chicago Hair Airport as filed, maintain 4000, expect 15000, one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency 133.27. Squawk 5335. All right, up we come here. Squawk 
Water ski, 4795, read back correct. And we're on the right side because I'm going to point my nose more into the wind when I do my run up. All right, set the brakes. All right, and I'll probably cut this part out because you guys have seen this run up checklist. Brake set, doors went closed and locked. Flight controls for the second time. Everything feels good, free and correct. Flight instrument. Going off on 2-7, but he's going to turn us. Okay, everything looks set. Directional gyro, double check, mixture. We're going to leave it lean, throttle to 1500 RPM. All three look good. Sound good. Out of two. And if you'll notice, part of my issue is I got a new switch. EIS is working. EIS is back online. Magneto is working. Magneto is back online. It only drops about 10 RPM on that. Okay. Temperatures, pressures, amp meter, that all looks good. Back to idle. Good idle. Okay. Carb is good. That's one thing I did not check was the carb heat. I don't know, rerun it back up. And carb heat is good. Take off checks. Circuit breaker. Radio to tower. Next frequency is set. Transponder is on alt. Flaps are up. Floor is clear. Primer is in and locked. Get that on roll on. Taxi fuel boost pump will get on roll on. Do the takeoff checklist. Fuel flaps trim. We're going to rotate at 85. Wind is pretty much non existent. Yeah, it doesn't look like much of anything. Okay. Air flaps, cruise, climb, trim, and we'll get the mixture as we'll lean it as we go. Okay. Good morning, Quad City Tower, Comanche 6928 Papa at November 27, ready for takeoff. Comanche, Comanche 6928 Papa, Quad City Tower, hold short runway 27, traffic landing. 6928 Papa will hold short here at 27 for landing traffic. Oh, and it's right there too, folks. Legion. Well, that was very Comanche well. Papa, runway 27 at November, line up and wait. 27 at November, line up and wait, 6928 Papa. Okay, rolling on. Fuel, flaps, final check of the trim. Line up and wait. Allegiant, 1560, turn to right at Texway Juliet, then contact ground point nine or good day. Right at Juliet point nine, Allegiant, uh, 1560, Sam. Okay, on center line, there's the Allegiant plane. I didn't know they did this here. I've never done it before. Command G28 
runway Papa turn left heading 230, runway 279 November cleared for takeoff. Left 230, 6928 Papa cleared for takeoff. Wind 200 at 11. Okay, so we do have a little bit of a left to right. Brake is off. Power's coming in. Using some right rudder. Oh, cold air, nice. Lots of horsepower. There's 60, 70. Temperatures and pressures look good. RPMs look a little bit high. Okay, they're gonna need to make an adjustment there because that was quite a bit higher than what it should be. Okay, pitch for 105. Here coming up. Temperatures and pressures are still looking good. Pitch for cruise. There's a thousand Watch feet. Tower, Skyhawk 4352, Romeo, only short runway 27 at November, ready to depart. Gears up. Scott Flaps are up. Romeo, Quad City Tower. Turn right heading 310, runway 279 November, cleared for takeoff. Traffic's Comanche. Departing runway 27 north, correction southwestbound. Clear for takeoff, runway 27, turn right heading 310. We'll watch out for the Comanche, thank you. Yeah. Comanche to a Papa, contact departure, good day. To a Papa, over departure, thanks, sir. Good morning, Quad City departure, Comanche 6928, Papa, indicating 1,600 in climb. Comanche 6928, Papa, Quad City departure, good morning. Radar contact, VFR altitude to discretion, and resume on navigation to Quincy. To a Papa, turning left to 201, climbing to 4,500, to a Papa. Okay, let's kick that fuel boost pump coming off. Fuel pressure's holding. We are going to have a heck of a headwind, or it's going to be from here, but it's, it's going to be a, a headwind. 4,500 is our target. That should be, yeah, 201, that's a lot of work. Fly heading 211 gets us 202, so 210, 211. Getting 130 miles an hour. Cylinder heads look good. Exhaust gas temperatures look good. Oil pressure, oil temp looks good. Hottest cylinder is 373. 2,700 for three, or correction, for 4,500. Climbing at about 900 feet a minute. Let's go ahead and back this off to 2,500. Skyhawk 4352, Romeo, Quad City Departure, Radar Contact, VFR Altitude, Deer Discretion, and resume on navigation to Jamesville. Looks like I, I went over 2575, which is not a big deal. It, it was only for a 30 seconds, if that. But uh, looks like the, some of the work I had done up here changed that slightly. So we're going to have to, there's a prop governor up front that's going to have to be adjusted, but that's, that's something I can control with the throttle. When I advance the throttle, I just got to stop at a certain point. All right, 1,000 feet to go. And we can start leaning this mixture a little bit. Cylinder head temperatures are looking good.
At least the air is smooth. Cold air, love it, it's making tons of power. Now we're just adjusting the mixture as we climb up. I want to maintain that, oh, 1350 degrees uh, exhaust gas temperature, somewhere in there. It means I'm making best power in the climb. Cylinder head temperatures are staying under 370 now. Air speed's 125. Climbing at 800 feet a minute. Four thousand three hundred for four thousand five hundred. Four thousand four hundred fifty. Start leveling off here. Oh, so bring the nose level. And we'll start picking up some airspeed. Yeah, we're going to have about a 17 knot headwind today, folks. So it's going to take us a little bit of time to get down there, a little bit extra, a couple extra minutes anyway. Start dialing in some. Nose down trim, take some of the pressure off the yoke. Still wide open throttle for the extra cooling fuel that that gives us. 4,500. Cylinders are looking good. Speed is slowly building. The last 10 miles an hour really takes a little bit of time. I'm trying, I put the camera back here again. I hope you folks can see. The problem I'm having is when it's up here on this side, you bump your head on it when you get into the plane. So I was like, well, I don't want to do that. So I might have to go back to the suction cup on the window. Um, or, or figure something else out, I'm not sure. And maybe I can put it on an arm and bring it up here or something. Part of the problem that I'm having too is the light from outside is different than the light in here. So sometimes the camera sees the panel great but doesn't see outside very well. And that's driving me a little bit nuts. There's probably some adjustment, I'm just not much of a, you know. Scott 52 Romeo, say altitude climbing too. Alright, there's our speed. 4,500, 65% is 21.623. Scott 52 Romeo, 21.6, 623 and we're going to lean it okay for uh, let's see we want 100 degrees rigid peak by the book is 14 so we're about 13.2 just a little bit leaner than where we are right now That's 13.2. All right, we'll set the trim out here. Go direct, KUIN, autopilot on, heading, PS steering. There we go. Now we'll get the altitude just right. All 
right, folks, we're kind of truing out here. Right at 4,500. She's holding pretty steady right there. Indicated airspeed is 150. We got to add 253 miles an hour. Just double check. Might be a slight descent, so we'll say 152. Sun coming in. 3022. Outside air temperature is 246 Celsius. Calibrated airspeed is 152. Gives us 140 knots. True airspeed. Our ground speed is 112. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, we're gonna be flying into the wind. So 4,500, should be 143 knots, I'm showing 140. All right, we'll take that. All right. Cylinder heads, everything's looking good there. Might be able to lean it just a titch more. So, folks, tale of woe and misery. So, airplane ownership, it's a blast. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, went on a flight up to Madison with, with a cousin, had some breakfast, came back, everything's fine. Landed, put the plane away. A week or so later, called Chip Nuckley, who's a, who's a controller here at Moline, also a CFII, said, hey, oh, Diane is down in, and uh, she moved down to Kiwani, harder time getting with, getting hold of her, and, and, and she's coming up here to do it. So anyway, I asked Chip to take me up and do my, uh, uh, oh, six approaches and a hold. Actually, I think we were going to do a, a flight review, an uh, IPC, Instrument Proficiency Check. So anyway, which I, I wasn't scheduled for, but hey, that's all right. You know, it's it's good practice. So pre-flight the plane, get in. Hold on, we got to switch tanks. Your boost pump coming on. Right main on. Left main off. Your boost pump coming off. Fuel pressure is holding. And we've got uh, 4.3 gallons used. Two three zero at two thousand. We'll just call it five. Mark our radar contact. VFR altitude gear description and resume our navigation to the south practice area. Reset the timer. Two zero four. Okay. Uh, altitude so. Resume on course. Get in, pre-flight, get in the plane. We get all buckled in, everything's set, figure out what we're going to do. And um, start taxiing. Taxi out to the runway. Go to do the run-up. So run the aircraft up. Reach down. Turn off the electronic ignition. Nothing happens. No drop. Like, what the heck? Turn it back, you know, flip the switch back on. Now it was a different switch, so it gives you one clue. Like, what in the world? Reach down, flip it off again, watching the RPM, no change. I said, no, that's weird. Maybe the switch is bad, that's what I'm thinking. Or maybe the EIS isn't running. Reach over, EIS is on, reach over, flip the mag off. No change. Center, Jerry Papa, contact Chicago Center, 135.6. 6928, Papa, over to Chicago, 
Good morning, Chicago Center. Command 6928 Papa, VFR 4500. Command 6928 Papa, Chicago Center. Good morning. Rollington Altimeter 3023. 3023, Papa, thank you. So, uh, flip the, the mag off. No change. Now I'm going, oh, now I'm thinking broken P lead as well. What, what's going on? <laughs> so I, I bring it back. I, I leave it up there and I go, huh. I flip both switches off. Engine keeps running. <laughs> I go, what the heck happened? So I turn them both back on. I say, okay, we're done. And uh, start, we head back to the barn. So this is at now. I'm, I'm at the 2,000 RPM. I flip both switches off the airplane. The engine doesn't shut off. <laughs> so taxiing back to the barn. I'm at 1,000 RPM. I go, God, I can't. And, I'm, and Chip looks at me, and I'm looking at him, and we're both scratching our head. So I reach down and I flip the EIS off. Now I got the mag on. Flip the EIS off. Idling at a thousand RPM and the plane shuts off. You know, it starts to shut off. Now I flick it right back on, and it comes on. And now we're really stumped, right? So, in a nutshell, at two thousand RPM, the electronic ignition wouldn't shut off, and the mag wasn't working at all. At a thousand RPM, the mag still wasn't working and the EIS would shut off. So I'm sitting there scratching my head and I'm going, well, you know, maybe there's some kind of default circuit in that electronic ignition that says, look, when we're under power, you don't shut off. No matter what, you don't shut off. Like a mag would do. A mag wouldn't shut off. And I, I go, well, I, I guess that could, you know, uh, be a, be a fail-safe of some kind. I don't know, right? So I we go back, we're both going, uh, we don't get it. Park the plane. Call call Cliff down at Heritage, and I go, okay, riddle me this, and I, exp I explain it to him, and he's not sure. We're both thinking faulty switch, right? On uh, the switch went bad. It's not turning the magneto on. Although once the airplane's running, that magneto shouldn't shut off, but. Well, I mean, that's not true. If the P lead's broken, then then it won't shut off. So, or so we're thinking faulty switch. A couple weeks later, of course, get somebody to come down, and Sean, uh, uh, Tim Guntley, who's who's the guy who's using before over at Heritage, he went he left because he lives in Rockford. Heritage moved to Freeport, and the drive was too much. I talked to Tim, and he went over to Poplar Grove Aeromotive which is just east of Rockford, real short. I think maybe Poplar Grove is like a suburb or something, or that. Um, Belvedere, I think, is what the town is actually in. So anyway, anyway. So, we, we, call, call Cliff, Sean comes down. Sean gets out his multimeter, climbs underneath, checking stuff out. Says, huh, the switch is working? Multimeter says, you know, I've got a connection, everything's running through. He's checking the magneto. The EIS has a control thing that's buried underneath the floor. We pull the floor <laughs> floor apart, checking that. Everything everything seems to be working. So I'm sitting there looking, thinking, well, I got egg on my face. It's, you know, it's gonna be the old, when the mechanic's not here, it breaks. When the mechanic's here, it's working. <laughs> so, so, we pull it out, pull the plane out, right in front of the hangar, do a run up. Does the same thing, 2000 RPM. And Mag uh, EIS won't shut off, Magneto is not running at all. Shut both of them off, the airplane is not shutting off. Um, so I look at Sean, I say, I go, well, riddle me this, man. <laughs> you say everything's working. So we pull the magneto off, figuring, okay, the magneto shot, something broke in the magneto, it's not working. We, we think the switch is bad. So Sean says, look, I'm gonna take this magneto over and have it rebuilt. 
have it tested, and I'm going to bring another switch down. And I got to admit, the 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 switch for the EIS system is a little I don't want to call it chintzy, but the throw on the on the switches. Super soft. You breathe too. I've I've actually bumped it. When I'm setting the brakes, I bumped it with my, just touched it with my knuckle and it would shut off. So I wasn't real happy with the switch anyway. Okay, 5098, contact Chicago Center 135.15, see ya. And, so I, I, I'm talking to Sean. Yeah, Magneto's, something happened inside the mag. Not with the gearing, but with the point system. Don't know what, nothing, the plane didn't do anything funky when I landed the last time I flew it, it flew fine. So whatever it was, it was, you know, who knows. And we both think, oh, the switch is bad. So we get the mag built, he comes back down. We spend, I kid you not, six hours in the hangar with this new Magneto. We can't get the mag, the new mag to time out, right? So we're just in the prop, 25 degrees before top dead center on the number one cylinder. We adjust, you know, make sure the gearing, everything is lining up, mounting the mag, cannot get it to, cannot get it to time. Six hours, we've had the mag on and off like six times trying to figure out, I mean, it got so bad that Sean, who's done this dozens of times, actually pulled the direction out thinking, am I missing something? <laughs> now, luckily the hangar's heated because it was freezing outside. <laughs> so... We finally, I mean, we're, we're FaceTiming. What are we doing wrong with, with Cliff, who's, of course, much, much senior. You know, thinking Cliff walks us through it and not get it to timeout. Now we're thinking, okay, when the, when the guys over at Rockford rebuilt the mag, they put the wrong, a wrong coupler on or something like that because we cannot get this thing to timeout. Pull the mag back off. Away it goes, right? So now he did build me this switch. This toggle switch has got the type of toggles that you have here. You have to pull it out. So you can't you can't just bump it and shut it off. You have to pull it out and pull it down. You know, so we re we got good solid switches in there now, which I feel much better about. So turns out, okay, so anyway, now Two weeks later, we rebuild it. Cliff comes down this time, right? Because Sean is probably frustrated with me because I'm sitting there, you know, as an owner looking over his shoulder for six hours. He's getting t And he brought a new guy with Tony, who who's, a, who's learning, brand new learning. Good for him. Uh, seemed to know what he was doing. Got in here, knew how to run the multimeter, and you know, that's a lot of electronics. You know, nice guy. Um, Allegiant 891, Chicago Installed the switch, checked everything. Anyway, Cliff comes down. And we spent, with, with the mag that we had checked, remount it. Now, it did have to come off on and off a couple times. Because there's a gear in there that the coupler goes into that you can also adjust. Got it timed. Got all the spark plugs back in, or the top spark plugs back in. All, you know pulled it out, run it up, it works. I'm like, so that's where I've been, a month and a half. A month of that was was getting, was just troubleshooting, figuring out what the hell, you know, I had to put the floor back together. Uh, so now it's running good. Actually, something we've done, adjusted the amount of horsepower I'm making because I'm, my RPMs are going up over red line. So I'm gonna have to get that adjusted. This is the first flight after which I can fly up to Heritage and have that done. That's a little simply a screw adjustment cut the safety wire, adjust the screw on the prop governor. So until that gets that done, I'll just control it with the with the, uh, with the throttle. Um, anyway, we are on a slow, slow 110 knot cruise to Quincy. I'm going to eat some breakfast, just burn some av gas, move the oil around. Luckily, it's been cold enough. I don't have to worry about rust forming in the engine. One nice thing, when it's below freezing, water doesn't do anything. It turns to ice. Um, 
Heated hangar works lovely. I gotta admit, I'm loving that. Anyway, that's it. Looks like I've got, uh, oh, about 30 minutes till we get there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the cameras off until I'm ready to, uh, to come in for an approach because they don't have much battery left. They're already at 40 minutes. <laughs> Talk to y'all in a bit. Bye. All right, guys, we're back. We're nine minutes out. We're just starting our descent into Quincy. Um, let's go ahead and real quick listen to the ATIS. Quincy Regional Baldwin Field. American 767, contact Kansas City Center, 119.47. Zulu, wind 220 at 06. Visibility 10. Sky condition clear. Temperature 06 Celsius. Dew point 02 Celsius. Altimeter 3028. Remarks. Density altitude minus 500. So wind 220. Automated weather runway 22. Sun Country 275, Frederick Rivers. Do not exceed 290 knots for spacing. We climbed a little bit. Frederick Rivers Let's messing around. 290 knots, Sun Country uh, 275. I see the airport. Kansas City approach, Kansas, uh, Comanche 6928 Papa with uh, uh, Quincy in sight. Comanche 28 Papa, Roger Radar Service to determine any squawk speed bar, change of eyes, three seats approved, you have a good day. Thank you, sir, you do as well. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay. Quincy area traffic, Comanche 6928 Papa, 15 miles north northeast of the field, descending through 4,500 feet. Be crossing midfield, 500 above pattern altitude to enter a left downwind runway 22, Quincy. Okay, folks, autopilot off. Pull a couple inches of manifold pressure here and start our way down. Oh, one other piece of news that I wanted to share with you. I talked to, I think it was Thursday or, yeah, it was Thursday. I talked to uh, the autopilot folks, Genesis Systems, and um, the Comanche is going to is gonna happen. So uh, hopefully in the next 30 days, they are going to... Um, uh, start the process. 2300 feet, 1800 is pattern. I want to be 500 above when I cross midfield. So they're going to start the process of um, doing the testing. They found a Comanche 400 owner, bless his heart. He's going to let him uh, use his plane. I'm sure he's getting some form of compensation. Uh, you know, you'd have to be. Uh, because an hour on a Comanche 400 is... <laughs> It's expensive, uh, just in, in engine and, and you know rebuilding a uh, one of those O's, uh, the the IO 720 uh, is it is it this same engine as mine with two more cylinders, so it's an eight cylinder aircraft is probably seventy five eighty thousand dollar rebuild. So just in every hour you fly, you're really having to set some uh, aside for engine reserve. Just that, much less the fuel that the damn thing drinks. Anyway, so that's good news. I am scheduled in July. What I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, transponder. I'm going to move it over here to this glove box. I'm going to drop this whole stack down if this will fit, and I'm going to put that autopilot right there. That way it's right on top. Easy to read, easy to adjust. And uh, that's the plan. Anyway, that was some good news. So let's go ahead and get busy here getting landed. We're descending, I want to be about five, six hundred feet a minute. Quincy area traffic, Comanche 6928 Pop, uh, 3,700 feet descending. I am 10 miles north, north, east of the field. Be crossing midfield 2,200 to enter the pattern on a left downwind runway 22, Quincy. All right, let's go ahead and ski daddle on down here. And we're going to switch tanks back onto left main. It is the fullest. Right main off. Fuel pressure is holding. 
It should have used like 11.8 gallons. We've had such a headwind that that doesn't surprise me actually. All right, Get ourselves a little nose down trim here. I'm behind in my descent, so we're gonna make it up. I'll head on a swivel. Because we gotta find them looking for traffic. And I'm feeling rusty. Papa, seven miles north of the field, crossing midfield, 2,200 feet to enter a uh, left downwind uh, for runway 22, Quincy. Okay, 2,700 for 2,300. Okay, pattern altitude is 1,800 feet. We're at 20, almost 2,300, which is 500 above pattern. So I want to, I want to go over the top of the airport and not be in that, in that traffic pattern of, of 1,800 feet. So we'll, we'll go over the top. We'll fly outbound for a minute. We'll turn, turn, come back inbound, descending turn, coming back inbound uh, uh, to enter the left downwind on the 45. I could probably as quiet as it is just. Do a straight in, but eh, I haven't flown in a while and it feels good to fly, so we're going to fly it. Quincy Area Traffic, Command 6928 Papa. North of the field, uh, four miles. We'll be flying over midfield and entering a left downwind runway 22. Quincy. Okay, so here's the airport right here. I'm north of the field. I'm gonna go across, come back in and, and around. There's pattern altitude. Or actually, no, yeah, I wanna be above pattern altitude. Tend to eat too quick, too far. Told you I'm rusty. Let's see area traffic command 6928 Papa, two miles north of the field, 2100. Be entering, uh, flying over midfield to enter a left downwind runway 22, two, Quincy. So runway 22 is this one here that's going that way. We're gonna come across, we're gonna come out, we're gonna come back in. 2100 feet, so we're above pattern altitude. Oh, what I worry about is like a cub or somebody without an electrical system not listening on the radio or not having a radio to listen on, which they don't have to, you know. Anybody in the pattern? Quincy Area Traffic Command 6928 Papa, 2,200 feet directly over midfield. Be flying outbound uh, southeast to come back in on a left downwind runway 22, Quincy. Okay, we can start our descent. We want to go, you know, a mile and a half or so out. And we're looking for 1,800 feet pattern altitude. 
make sure we don't see anybody. Oh, and we're gonna make a right-hand turn. Come back in on the 45. Another three tenths of a mile. Make sure we got plenty of room and we're looking for people. There we go. Quincy area traffic, command 69 Papa, 1,800 feet, one and a half miles southeast of the field. We're doing a uh, 45 left downwind for runway 22, Quincy. Okay. Get our prop dialed in here. We're right off the end of 3 1. Descending here. Okay, there's two two. Quincy area traffic, command six nine two eight pop air entering a left downwind runway two two Quincy. Okay, we're backing off the throttle here so we can get slowed down. We're inside gear speed. Side gear speed. A little bit below pattern altitude. Not too bad. Okay. Throw the gear down. Slow it down to 100 miles an hour. We'll get the first notch of flaps in. Quincy area traffic, command 6922. Abeam the numbers, runway 22. Okay, let's start down. One notch of flaps is in. Gas, undercarriage, mixture. Prop. Speed, we're at 100. That's perfect. Turn left base. Gas, undercarriage, mixture prop. Second notch flaps coming in. We're looking for 90. Landing speed today is going to be 80 miles an hour. 80 miles an hour. Final looks good. Quincy area traffic, Comanche 6928 Papa, turning final, runway 22 Quincy. There's 90, that's holding well. It's 95 actually, we'll get it a little bit slower. Our descent is good. I like how we're descending. So, gas, undercarriage, mixture, prop. A little bit high now. Pull a little bit of power. That'll descend us quicker. I don't want to pick up airspeed. Still want to be about 90. Quincy area traffic, Comanche 6928 Papa, short final runway 22, Quincy. Okay, we're right on 90. And we're going to give a little bit more gas to stop our descent. Here is down, short final. Third notch of flaps at the airport fence. Coming in. Couple twists trim, we're looking for 80. Now we're going to land a little bit farther down so I can, that second turn off is where I want to go. Okay, there's 80 miles an hour. There's 80. Looking good. Pull some power. I'm a little bit high. A little bit high. A little bit high. There she comes. There she is. Okay, we'll remove the extra lift. She sits down on her rear wheels. Clean it out. Big old hawk taking off right there. We're going to make this turn off onto Frank. Oh, 
Little boost pump can come off. Quincy Area Traffic, Comanche 6928 Papa, clear of the active Quincy. All right, folks, there we go. We are clear and after landing checklist. Flaps are up, carb heat, mixture, pedo, have that on. Strobes, landing taxi coming off. Fuel boost pump is off, okay. And we are lean. So, let us get out our taxi diagram. We are on Foxtrot, we're turning right onto Alpha. Quincy Area Traffic, Comanche 6928 Papa, crossing runway 1331 at Alpha. Quincy. Runway 1331. Best year. Okay, let's clear, let's boogie across. Oh, I see the lineman. You know, I'm gonna buy gas too, cause it's gonna be cheaper here. Crossing this taxiway, that looks good. All right, folks, hey, thanks for coming along. We're gonna park, get ourselves some French toast, I think, today. And, uh, and on the flyback will be quick with that tailwind. Let's spin it around. I think this guy was here helping us last time we were here. That was months ago. Perfect. All right. We will see you all later. Bye.